This section of the book is tip is actually referred to as standing waves on a string, but we are going to take a quite a slight detour into thinking about electromagnetic standing waves. And the reason that this makes sense is that there's a lot of similarities. The difference being that instead of creating your standing wave where you have a wall and you have a string, so you say the ends are fixed, but you can have some sort of standing wave on the string. Now what we're going to have are two mirrors. So we have a mirror and in this case, I'm thinking about optical light, so visible light. You can have similar things that we maybe wouldn't call mirrors if we're dealing with x-rays or radio waves, um, but frequently we're gonna talk about just visible light. And so then we have some sort of standing wave in between these two mirrors that I obviously draw very badly, but would be a very nice sine wave. So Standing waves are something that can happen really for any part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And again, radio waves would be one we'll talk about this with, microwaves or light. Um, so mathematically it looks the same, but the scale, right, the length scale we're interested in is going to be really different. And that's because of the wavelength of each of these. For light, we're going to be talking about, say, 500, a little more or a little less, nanometers. Are your wavelengths. For microwaves we're maybe talking about two to three centimeters is your wavelength and for radio we're maybe talking about one to three meters or more is your wavelength. So if we're talking about very very different wavelengths of course we would be talking about very different widths between our boundaries for standing waves. But the reasoning that we're using and the math really looks the same as standing waves on a string. So the example that the book gives, which is a, a really nice example for what we're doing right now, is the idea of a laser. The laser is going to use a two mirrors, and this mirror is a full reflector, i.e. a normal mirror. It reflects all of the light that hits it. This mirror is a partial reflector, and I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but for instance, that's maybe transmitting 1% of the light and reflecting 99% of the light. And if anything, I think it actually reflects even more than 99. I think it's it's less than 1% gets transmitted. But the idea is you're trying to set up a standing light wave inside. And the details of where the light actually comes from and why we want to create a standing wave actually requires some modern physics, thinking about uh, atomic energy levels to really understand why we want the standing wave. But the basic idea is we get a standing wave that's electromagnetic in nature. Some of it comes out, which is the laser beam. And this is actually special. That laser light is special because all of your light is coming out in phase. With normal light, it's just kind of a mix of a bunch of different waves. Laser light, it's really like it's one wave. And that, that's what gives it such special properties. Um, again, special not necessarily meaning, oh, it's bright and it's a dot. But from a physics point of view, laser light is quite special. Now. Keep in mind that the wavelength of optical light, especially if it's red light, is say six or seven or eight hundred nanometers. So these little up downs are really, really small. And most laser cavities still have what I would call a macroscopic width. So a width that's a few millimeters or even perhaps centimeters, depending on how it's constructed. And what that means is you actually have a mode that is going to be M that's really, really, really big, right? So remember that M would be counting how many bumps you have. So if I look at literally the picture they gave me, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is our 20th mode, so a harmonic. In reality, the mode you might be dealing with is, for instance, say 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9, something really high like that. But obviously we're not going to uh, draw that and you would get really bored listening to me count that. So again, recognize here that the physics of the standing wave is really the same. What's important is that at the boundary you have to have a node. That's really what's in common here between how light is hitting the mirror or a string hitting a wall.